I'm joined by Damon from Charlie3, and we're going to talk about the Oracle that is built on Cardano, a native Oracle. And I'm pretty interested in this one because I know nothing about Oracles at all. So, Perfect. yeah, this is probably why I haven't interviewed yet because yeah. I don't know much about uh, the whole reason why we need Oracles and anything like that. So, Damon, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I know we uh, have talks for a fair amount of time, but yeah, I never got around to it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's going to be good to get an understanding of it. So can I get an explanation of what an oracle is for sure. anyone that's listening? Yeah, so the basic understanding of what an oracle is, is just that smart contracts on chain can't interact with real data off chain. So this is like stock prices, foreign exchange, weather, sports, whatever kind of data you want. Uh, could even be shipping logs for different companies, you know. It, right, it, okay. Yeah, it depends on what you want. Uh, and a lot of these projects in, I'll say even specifically Cardano, but blockchain in general, want this data to do different processes with, you know, different trading platforms like Indigo doing uh, synthetic assets, which is just a tokenized version of, of stocks and Forex. Um, and what an Oracle does is be that intermediary. We're able to translate that data and be able to hash it on chain for people to use uh, effectively uh, and securely. Okay. I don't understand why these uh, smart contracts and anything that's being built can't just get that data from other websites. Like, uh, if uh, if a weather reporting website is uh, you know reporting the weather of a sure. local area, why can't um, uh, just be programmed in to pull in that data from there that source? Yeah, so it has to come from the outside source to put it on on chain if they yeah. wanted to. So you yeah. would have to talk to you know Yahoo Finance or a weather station yeah. or something, yeah. and then they might want to hash that data directly on chain so it's it's more of a, a singular directional situation right yeah okay um if you want the in-depth technicals that's not me <laughs> i'm, yeah, I'm yeah, the cmo yeah. i'm not cto yeah. so yeah. um past that though the reason why people aren't just taking from one set so you could connect uh probably to an api directly from yahoo finance or google yeah. finance yeah. uh but now you only have one point of data if somebody knows a competitor or a malicious actor knows that you're only pulling from that single source, they could come in and ruin that connection that you have and completely sh right. screw up your entire platform of trading for as long as you want, which could cause uh, insane amounts of loss in trading because now you're trading okay. on the wrong values. You okay. know? Do you imagine if you went to the store to buy something uh, or say, did you go to the bank to deposit $500? And you were trading on the assumption that five hundred dollars was five hundred dollars, but the actual price of that dollar was thirty cents less. Yeah. Now, how how much money did you think you lose? Yeah. The same thing happened uh, recently with Chainlink's feed uh, with the Luna crash, where they shut it off at a certain point because they thought the value was bad because it crashed so hard so quickly. Right. Okay. And uh, and then they shut it off, and people traded on the wrong value for. Um, like a couple of hours and there's 60 some million dollars lost within that couple hours. That is, that is absolutely crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. So that, that happened part of it. That wasn't really Chainlink's fault per se. Yeah. Uh, it was just the nature of the thing. They have a fail safe put in it, like 98% loss. Usually things don't drop within 98% in like a few hours. So yeah, uh, so yeah that's, that's kind of the nature of why you need an Oracle because we pull from multiple sources yeah. and we back up each one of those sources multiple times. Yeah. So uh, there's always redundancy, there's always safety in your trading platform, and uh, that's the company's lifeblood, right? So you have to yeah. make sure it's safe. Gotcha, okay. And then it's on chain, yeah. it's there, no one can touch it, so all these other DeFi protocols and anyone else building can extract that data and use yeah. it in their platforms. Okay, now all those dApps are building and getting that data source, uh, how do how do they absorb that? Do they have to pay a fee or something to to use it, or is it publicly available? Yeah, t typically uh, how oracles have worked so far in in crypto blockchain is yeah, you you pay per update. So it's not the consumability of that data that costs you because yeah, okay. once it's there, you can consume it. We can't yeah. do anything about that. It's actually the process of putting that on chain. So the whole thing there with other blockchains is usually it's a bunch of different, I'll just say tokens to keep it simple. And uh, we update those tokens, there's a finite amount, everyone who orders one gets one and you consume it for your platform. Uh, for ours, with how the Basil updates have gone on Cardano, it makes it much different. It's called a reference input. Now it's a single input, 
uh, a single token that goes online, a EUTXO, yeah. and it is infinitely pullable from one source for all projects. So you don't have to that upload is. many, many, many multiples, which keeps congestion down, it keeps latency down on getting the data to the project as fast as possible. Yeah. Uh, and it also keeps costs down because now you're not paying for a zillion transactions to be put on chain, you're only paying for one. Uh, as far as how people will pay for that, uh, this, this uh, reference input model is kind of messed over our idea of what we plan to build, you know? Uh, <laughs> okay. So we have to uh, figure that out later. If it's a unique set of data, yeah, will, you'll have to pay for it because you're the only one using it. Yeah. The problem with the reference input model for a revenue source is uh, that if it's a very needed piece of data, the ADA USD price yeah. per se, like every project needs this, um, every DeFi project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, they, they, the first person won't want to have to pay for that alone and then have everyone piggyback off of it. Because now yeah. once it's there, anyone can pull from it. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to figure something out, maybe a subscription model in the, in the future to say, hey, we'll help you integrate everything. We'll set it all up for you. Uh, and it's and you'll have constant tech support if you need it for integrating new feeds, yeah. but it's this much per month. So that'll be very new as far as the Oracle system goes because generally it's just a yeah, per month okay. update or per update cost. Now I have to congratulate you and the team there because at Rare Bloom here you launched the ADA USD price. Yes. So your platform is launched now, that data feed is out there yes. and now dApps can, apps, uh, can use that data feed. Yeah, and we so just since last night, there's been three projects that have contacted us wow, that I didn't even know existed yeah. that want to use these data feeds, which is surprising. I thought I knew everyone already. <laughs> uh, right. So that was great. And they're like, how can we get in? Where's the developer content? And we're still working on the, uh, the documentation for it. Yeah. Obviously, we wanted to get the product out. Now we're yeah. getting the documentation. We have a new website. We have press releases to bring as much attention to it as possible because it's a big thing. DeFi can't exist really in a safe manner. Uh, how we're building on Cardano without uh, an Oracle. So yeah, we, we launched live on mainnet last night, it was very, or yesterday, yeah. and it was uh, very exciting for us and the ecosystem, and I'm sure there'll be more to hear about it. Yeah, it's, it's a big congratulations a point. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll shake your hand Thank on you that. Yeah, much. it's absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, really, really uh, appreciate it. All right, so now we're waiting for a little bit more documentation so other people can uh, start using it and consuming that data easily. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, and I think that'll be really great to see once people start using it. Even if they find you know bugs in our system, that helps everybody as well. You know, that helps us out. That helps the ecosystem out. Um, and on that same note, uh, we are looking at doing another audit here soon too. We yeah. had one before, but so much has changed in the yeah. last like eight months since we did the last one. So. Uh, we'll get another audit up so people can feel comfortable and secure and safe. Yeah. And we also made sure to launch this uh, over a month before the next person could potentially use it. We yeah. queried a lot of the projects yeah. and our partners to see when when can you use it first. So uh, Indigo, Endmaker, ADAO, Summon Platform, uh, and the Clumsy Ghost NFT project will be the first ones to use it. Uh, but they're still, yeah, a month plus away to, from potentially yeah. using it. And that just gives us that time to build that trust and security up for those projects to know they're getting it from a reputable, trusted source. So it'll run for a whole month. And uh, it's also paid for 100% for free, uh, these first feeds. Uh, yeah. The first day the USC price plus the next four that we'll bring out will be 100% free for at least up to a year and a half for the community to use. We're subsidizing it. Yeah. Uh, and Catalyst funds are helping it, that out as well. Okay. Now, I, I did want to get into how you guys are funding this because yeah. we, we did have a, a bit of a conversation around that and uh, you're, you're almost running on a shoestring budget yeah. with the amount of money that you raised initially from your uh, token sale, etc. So how are you paying for this? Because uh, I know you might not have as much as you need yeah. to get it running and keep it going. Yeah, so the... Feeds are paid for by a completely separate wallet. It doesn't cost too much to update them on chain if, uh, if we're not really pushing out to that many not node operators as well anymore, yeah. or currently uh, as the MVP. Well, it'll be more expensive later. Yeah. But to start, we had two catalyst proposals uh, that were focused around providing free community feeds. As soon as we knew what was happening with the Basil updates, uh, that we, we couldn't make that model work as well as wanting to support early projects as they launch, we wanted to make things cost efficient for everyone. So we, we did catalyst proposals and 
won them pretty easily because uh, we're not actually taking that money. We put the, all of those funds in a separate wallet, yeah. which is $200,000 uh, worth of ADA, uh, and we're matching the same thing from the Charlie 3 side. Uh, and how that works is because the Charlie 3 token is used for payment on yeah. the oracles, yeah. and we have a bunch of tokens, so yeah. we can put that up uh, on the equivalent side of that, and it's not like we're selling it on the market, so it brings down the price, yeah. which would how, be how some people expected it to be because they're thinking US dollars worth and it's like it's token worth right yeah, yeah. so we have that in a completely separate wallet we've moved that out we'll figure that out too if it's one update per hour uh, for five different feeds we can run what we currently have for the next year and a half however we are going to keep putting proposals in for community free feeds uh, into cattle every catalyst proposal uh, here on forward so hopefully that can continue to get funded and we'll keep matching it as well okay is that sustainable though? Like you, you've got to get that subscription model working and everything else yeah. around it and onboarding new projects that want their own custom feeds that they'll pay for all that as well to keep it going and, and, and keeping the project going itself. Yeah, yeah so the feeds are sustainable, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but uh, the, the team is not on that for sure, yeah. obviously. That, that budget is purely for uh, the feeds and not for the team. So yeah, we, we do need uh, more investment for sure. And, we have a big thing coming up with uh, IO and Atala Prism. This is a separate revenue source that we've figured out, and these are the unique feeds. Uh, yeah. um, we have uh, what's called, what we're calling anyway, an on-demand validation oracle. So it's not just the price feeds. The oracle network can be used for more than just validating price. It can be yeah. used for validating identities, for validating uh, certificates. Uh, what have you. So what we're doing with the Teleprism uh, and Student Reader, and Maker, Book.io, Summon Platform, all these people are involved, is a scholarship payout for Ethiopian students uh, based on course completions that, uh, that Student Reader is putting out uh, along with Teleprism and Book.io uh, to, to incentivize students to learn more about blockchain. And so they will complete a course and we can validate that with the course completion area people and then uh, push out that uh, trigger smart contract payout to that student automatically. Gotcha. Uh, and But every one of those validations will cost for the Oracle update, yeah. right? To validate that piece of data. So that's that's huge because um, if we do that, we can don't even need people to pay for Oracle feeds because yeah. we're set and then we can help bolster the ecosystem even more. But when will that be available? Right? Yeah, when can we yeah, actually yeah. start bringing that in in the meantime? Yeah. So we have a number of investors lined up already that are quite interested. And I think the launch of this to show it's a tangible, real product that's yeah. working will help uh, tremendously in, in getting more people interested in what we are. That's amazing. So you, you have these potential things in place. Really cool to hear about that Atala Prism uh, working yeah. partnership, whatever you call it. So that's absolutely amazing to hear. So in terms of other oracles on other ecosystems, sure. I know some are really big, like yeah. Chainlink is absolutely huge. So considering now that you're the first one on Cardano, yeah. will you be just as big? Will you provide data to other ecosystems as well, like other chains? Yeah. Like how, how is the vision, how's the future of Charlie 3 looking? The vision does look as cross-chain. We, we can't not really. There's too much out there as a business to just forget it though. Yeah. Uh, but the big difference here, people still ask, why not Chainlink? Why Charlie 3? You know, um, and Cardano is on a completely different code language. That's why we had to make a native one for yeah. Cardano. Uh, so the vision is to go cross chain eventually. And uh, who's to say if we could get as big as that? I mean, Chainlink's a behemoth, you know? Yeah. They have funding from major, major corporations. Uh, another one that's just launching right away is called Super Oracle. And same thing, but it's all EVM based oracles. You know, yeah. nothing's in this space right now. There's no competition for us in Cardano, which is it's fine if it does come up. You know, it's it's good to have multiple sets and have redundancy. But to say if we're going to be as big as who's to say what the future holds for Cardano? Because um, we still think that this should be our our main focus even into the future, uh, yeah. and that the side chain stuff, or not the side chain, but the off chain, multiple chain, will be. Uh, an additional revenue source, but Cardano's, I think, always going to be the focus. We got into it for the long-term vision, and it would be silly to not follow that through. I think. I did hear of I did hear of other um, oracles being built on Cardano. One was uh, oh, yeah. Orcfax, Orcfax, I think. Orcfax, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've spoken to the Orcfax guys and figured out like where can we have synergies even. 
uh, work on work on things together. I mean, they have something they they are launching, which is exactly the same as our free feeds uh, that we have just launched, uh, which is they called it the uh, Open Oracle, uh, and that just means it's it's free subsidized fee for anybody to take from. But I think that they plan to fund it through a, a DAO mechanism. Yeah. Um, but again, community fed and yeah, minimal feeds to go up. They don't plan to have this huge uh, like no network that we do. They're a smaller operation, yeah. but definitely great to have uh, for different processes. And we, we uh, welcome anyone that's pulling that through. I mean, I think it was great even for us to, to see them putting out more documentation earlier where we never had that push to need to put out documentation because yeah. no one was caring. They know we, we weren't launching yet and they were putting out stuff on what they were planning to and it, it kicked us up a notch and now we have a bunch of uh, documentation coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, mainly because we saw them doing it. So I think that was that was great. It helped us out as well. Yeah. Competition always uh, kicks, you, you know, kicks you into gear. That's, yeah. mo that's most definite. All right, Damon, it's been awesome learning more about uh, the Oracle, Charlie 3, everything that you guys have been doing as well. And congratulations again on Thank the you. launch. It's absolutely amazing for the ecosystem too. Awesome. Uh, and as far as following what we got going on, if you just follow the Twitter, everything everything will be there as yeah. it comes up. We've got uh, new merchandise coming out. Uh, Love merch. Yeah, yeah, new mer yeah, yeah. this one yeah, here yeah, is yeah. a standard one. Um, but we have new merch, we have standard merch, we have very limited edition merch. There's only 25 pieces of these ones coming out, so look out for those. They'll have utility to them. Um, and Merch with utility. Yeah, merch with utility. Okay. All right. Yeah, All it'll right. be fun. And uh, if... Uh, if you're interested in the actual Oracle, we'll have a lot of documentation coming out on that. A brand new website with a dev portal coming out soon. Uh, and plan to do a lot of press releases around this. Uh, because, as we've said, it's it's kind of a big deal for uh, birth of DeFi, extra DeFi on, uh, on Cardano. Yeah. I have to end this with, uh, what, what are you most excited about with uh, Cardano at the moment? Man, I honestly, this, I don't mean to seem biased, <laughs> but uh, yeah. like just as a third party observer, an Oracle is needed for the rest of these ecosystems really to, to pump up and yeah. get away from basically Cardano right now, other than the DEXs, is all just NFT trading, right? And that's not what we're, we're in this for completely. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see the innovation that people use uh, this Oracle data for to, to build up more things in the Cardano ecosystem. Yeah. And even in the next month, I mean, what are we going to see at the summit? This space moves so fast that I'm I'm so excited to, to see even what comes up really quickly and other apps going live like Indigo and uh, specifically Indigo, they're a great partner of ours yeah. um, and see how that changes the game as well. It's just one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you talk to a lot of projects over the last two weeks, CNFT Con, uh, Web3 and at Rare Bloom as well. And I think they're all pretty excited about having all this data feed, being able to now launch their platforms as well and doing everything that they can for the Cardano DeFi ecosystem. Absolutely, yeah. All right. I'll make sure I put all the links to everything in the show notes so they can join the community, learn a little bit more, find the documentation and start building with Charlie 3. Perfect. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research because it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future. Really, it ain't no debate.